size SUV, or perhaps you already have one of these and you're wondering exactly what it can tow and how it does it. Well, today we're talking the towing capacity of the new 2019 and plus model years Volkswagen Atlas. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel, Jason here. Don't forget to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring that notification bell. That way you can know whenever we come out with a new video here. We got tons of DIYs, reviews, and how-tos. Today, we got a review on the 2019 Volkswagen Atlas. We kind of ended up with this vehicle because my wife and I, we like Volkswagen. So we've just hopped lease to lease, and previously we had a Volkswagen Tiguan. Our issue with that was we wanted to be able to tow. We wanted to get a travel trailer and the Tiguan is limited to only 1,500 pounds towing capacity. The Atlas is right amongst its peers at 5,000 pounds towing capacity. Telluride by Kia is 5,000 pounds. Chevy Transverse can be up to 5,000 pounds. Honda Pilot's only 3,500. And the Chevy Tahoe, which some put in the same class as this, it's gonna be a little bit higher around 6,500. But when it comes to the world of travel trailers, it's really, it's a big jump between the light trailers and then up to the 7,000 plus uh, tandem axle trailers. So by default, we ended up with this, which put us in the market for a trailer that weighs just under the towing capacity of 5,000 pounds. So for our travel trailer, we purchased a Riverside Retro 17 foot trailer. The dry weight on it is around 3,600 with the max weight on it being 4,500. So that puts us a little bit below what the 5,000 pound max towing capacity of this vehicle is rated for. Also, there are several other numbers that you want to keep in mind when calculating what exactly you can tow. And that's gonna be the maximum gross vehicle weight. And it's also going to be the maximum weight combined between your trailer rig and your tow vehicle. So those are all numbers that you kind of have to play with to make sure that you're towing something that's within the capacity of your vehicle safely. So this adventure, we went from San Francisco out to Las Vegas. It was the furthest that we've ever taken the Atlas and the furthest that we've ever taken our travel trailer. I did pass by a cat scale on the way because I wanted to get my weights and see exactly kind of how I was adding up and how everything was. Now the max um, tongue weight for this is 500. I don't have an accurate uh, weight for my tongue weight because I, I didn't unhook the trailer. Like I said, we were en route. We were in the middle of the desert, saw the scale, figured, hey, what the heck, I'll hop on there. So as far as the vehicle, uh, the vehicle, we had myself, my wife, the baby, the dog, a full tank of gas, everything inside the car that we needed to be comfortable and enjoy our trip, all right? The trailer was packed with groceries, clothes, everything for a one week vacation. So we're pretty much about maxed out. This is like the heaviest that will ever be going down the road, which is kind of a good time to weigh so that way I know, hey, when we're pushing it, what are we at? So according to the CAT scale, our vehicle came in at 5,600 pounds. Now the max weight, max gross uh, vehicle weight for this is 5,754 pounds. So we came in about 154 pounds light of what the max vehicle weight is. Now for our trailer, our trailer weighed in at 4,360, 4,360 pounds, which was about 200 pounds less than the max capacity of our travel trailer, which is 4,530. We even had the freshwater tank filled with 40 gallons and a little bit of black and gray water swashing around in there. So I'm really happy to know that we don't have our trailer overloaded and we are, you know, a good amount, about 700 pounds underneath the max towing capacity of the Atlas. Now this is where the numbers get a little bit off in our max weight trailer and truck came to 10,080 pounds. Now, for the two-wheel drive model, per the manual, it says 9,920. So we were about 160 pounds over on that. 
So even though we were a little bit over our total combined vehicle rig weight by about 160 pounds, we did have a full tank of gas and this thing chewed through gas, all right? I mean, it's a big vehicle, it's inspected. The curb weight's around 4,600 pounds, just the car sitting on the side of the road, okay? So it gets about 20 to 23, depending on how you drive it around town, about 50-50 highway and um, city traffic light stop and go. But on the highway, we got 12 miles to the gallon. So that extra 100 pounds of fuel, you burn that off in about 40 minutes. One thing that I thought was pretty interesting when we were cruising down the highway is if you have the patience for it and you can get behind a big rig like this, you can actually increase your fuel economy pretty significantly by drafting. Check out the estimated fuel economy when we're behind this large trailer. And then when I cut into the left lane and get into some fresh air, how significantly the fuel economy reduces. Now this is on flat land with the cruise control going, so there's not really much variable with any sort of grade or my foot on the pedal. I just thought that was very interesting to note how significant this difference is. does give a different weight for the four motion model, which is about 10,150 pounds. So if we were to really kind of look at the all wheel drive versus the two wheel front wheel drive one that this is, our numbers are somewhere in the middle. So I, I could say, honestly, I'm comfortable with that. Now, like I said, this is a two wheel drive model. It really does belong on the highway, but it isn't a, a pavement princess. You, you can take it off road a little bit you know i'm not gonna go like mudding or nothing but it's got pretty good ground clearance and it, it can go over some nice little rocks and stuff and the traction control is decent enough to where you're not going to spin the tires and get stuck on anything vehicle did come with the factory tow package which included a two inch receiver rated for 5,000 pounds towing 500 pound tongue weight now against what the uh, owner's manual did say i installed a combined anti-sway and weight distributing hitch on my trailer rig they do not recommend this from Volkswagen. There's been a lot of contention online. A lot of people don't understand why they say not to. Me personally, I just felt safer towing with it than without it, especially being a front wheel drive vehicle. If I don't have enough weight on the front, I don't have steering or I don't have any propulsion to get me forward and down the road. So what I did was I installed an aftermarket Kurt hitch down here. It was fairly straightforward install and it is rated for 800 pounds on the tongue weight and up to 6,000 pounds towing. It's a class three hitch. So that's what I used in conjunction with my Husky TS weight distributing and anti-sway trailer hitch. Aside from this trip to Vegas, we've done a couple trips up the Lost Coast of California, driving up and down the Pacific Coast Highway, California Highway 1. If any of you are familiar with that, you know it's very, very weavy. You know, you're only gonna hit maybe 35 max going on this thing because you're doing hairpin turns, breaking down really sharp turns. Uh, I don't have a brake controller. I bought one of the curved wireless ones. Talked to the guy at the RV dealer. He said it really wasn't necessary for a trailer this light. So I'm just running with the brake control that came with this, just the wire that you can set the pin harness, sending whatever signal it sends to the trailer brakes, and it does great. They don't lock up. The trailer doesn't fight me. It doesn't push me. Not, it's not dragging if I'm on uneven pavement. So I'm really happy with how factory wiring and whatever gain they have set up this trailer brake, it works really good as long as you're towing within that factory capacity. Another little FIY y'all want to keep in mind when you're towing with the Atlas is you do want to put it in sport mode. Just crank your little stick back. You're going to see a change from a D to an S right here. That's regular, that's sport. I'm sure anybody that's ever driven a Volkswagen already knows that. That's going to basically change your shift points. It's going to let it ride out those gears a little bit harder. That way y'all can do those long pulls in the Atlas. I didn't see the thing go past seventh the whole trip. Also, you're going to want to hit this button when it lights up. That means the uh, automatic on off has been deactivated. That way when you pull up to a light, it's not going to turn off and try and save gas, possibly making your brakes cut out or having you lose steering, thus control of the whole rig. Another very, very important thing to remember if you're like me and you can't drive without the little cheater lights here that let you know when someone's in your blind spot, you're going to want to go ahead and put those systems back on. When the Atlas recognizes that a trailer is on the back, it deactivates the rear assist and side assist. So using the buttons on your steering wheel, 
you go to the assist systems menu and you're going to want to go ahead and check the blind spot and rear traffic box that way you can activate those cool little lights that keep you from side swiping people so what's my overall take on the atlas as a tow vehicle i give this thing a freaking a plus we love this vehicle it is a true seven passenger vehicle i'm six three and a half i weigh about 245 pounds I can sit in all seven of the seats in this thing, adjusted for me to sit in all seven seats in this thing very comfortably. All the seats fold in the back for those Home Depot trips. And then for these long trips, for my wife and the baby in the back, it's like sitting in a limo. We kept it at 65 miles an hour on cruise control the whole way out here, zipping through the desert, 101 degrees, climbing up to the highest altitude of around 4,500 feet. And we did this all without the needle on the water temp going past half full. I monitored the oil temps. The highest the oil temp ever got was 263 degrees. And after only coming down to about 55 or coming to a place where it leveled off, the oil temp pulled back down to a cool 220 degrees within five minutes. So that being said, this engine is more than capable of towing what they have it rated for. Plus, it's a full synthetic oil. Synthetic oil should be good up to about 300 degrees. That being said, I will be going to my authorized Volkswagen dealer and getting an oil change as soon as I get back. They say about 10,000 miles, but the engine was working, man. It was putting in work to get this thing towed. So I am gonna treat it to some new oil when we get back, even though it'll only have about maybe 3,000 miles on the oil when we get back. But hey, you know, that's just taking care of your gear. I hope y'all enjoyed this review. I hope I made the decision a little bit easier for some of you guys that are shopping around for one of these, or I gave the confidence to those of you that already own one and want to take it out towing to haul your favorite toy to wherever you like to go and enjoy it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so that way you can find out whenever we come out with a new video. Pretty soon I will be releasing a review video on the Husky TS weight distributing and anti-sway trailer hitch that I have installed on my 17-foot travel trailer. Also, has anybody else had any experience towing with these? Are you using a, a weight distribution hitch or not? If not, what is it like? Do you experience any kind of trailer sway? What kind of altitudes have you towed? They say that it loses about 4% for every thousand foot gain. So we would have actually been below our capacity coming up over here, but I didn't experience any issues. Say what you think, tell us what your experiences have been down in the comments below. We'll see y'all next time. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of JTV. Don't forget to like, comment,